Welcome to the Positive Pants Podcast. Mindset, motivation, and inspiration to help you find your positive pants. Let go of negative thinking and stop living for the weekend with your host, Fran Excel. So welcome to the show. As always, it's Fran Excel Mindset Coach helping you find your very own pair of positive pants so you can get out of your own way and live a life that you love. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm very grateful you've chosen to put me in your earbuds today. Please do hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything and do leave me a review. I love, love, love reading them and it really helps me get found by other people who need to hear what I share. I'd also love you to email me your mindset and productivity questions or topics you'd love me to cover um, to hello at franexcel.com because I know a lot of you think I'm inside your heads because you tell me all the time. But if I don't know what you need, I can't give it to you. So let me know. Sales is scary. Sales is sleazy. Sales is manipulative. People who sell are untrustworthy. People who sell are greedy, grabby, nasty. There are so many negative beliefs around sales. We've all been conditioned in so many ways throughout our lives. The image of the car salesman who's trying to rip someone off on an old banger just to get their commission. The cold caller who we all love to hang up on. The nuisance person trying to sell us something when we just want to be left alone. But when we're operating from this thought system, how are we meant to be able to sell ourselves or our products? You know, sales is the one thing that's actually going to make your business grow. If you can't find an authentic way to sell that sits with who you are and your values, then you won't get anywhere. So let's start reframing it so that doesn't happen, shall we? So let's get to the root cause and decide if, decide if it's really true or if there could be another version of the truth that can help drive you forwards. You know, selling and sales isn't scary. I know, I know, I know. Many of you go, uh, yeah, it is. Are you mental woman? Right now, but I'm hoping that by the end of this, it may have reframed your thoughts even just a little. You know, it may feel scary right now, but it doesn't have to be, and it won't be going forwards if you can change the way you look at it. I was having a conversation around this with one of my glorious clients the other day, which prompted me to create this episode as it's something I see a huge amount of people struggle with. And here's the thing. Sales is simply a skill. Like all the things that I teach, it's simply a skill. We all possess it in some form because we walk around selling literally all the time. You know, every conversation when we want to go somewhere and want a friend to come with us, every time we have a point of view on something or an opinion on something and want to get it across, every time we're deciding where to go on a date with our significant others, you know, we're always selling in the hope of getting the outcome that we desire. We just don't think of it that way. You know, it is a skill that can be learned. How do I know? Because (laughs) as a whippersnapper for my first real job, I somehow managed to blag my way into working into the classified advertising department of the Financial Times. (laughs) I was a shy, incredibly insecure, self-conscious young lady. Even though it may not seem like that was ever a possibility. (laughs) Trust me. I wouldn't say boo to a ghost or even go anywhere by myself, which I have talked about before. So how does someone like that manage to convince someone I would be able to cold call potential advertisers into parting with their cash? How like did I do that? It's beyond me. (laughs) But I did it. And it was the beginning of a beautiful, successful 15-year career in media advertising sales. And I learned a thing or two along the way the do's and don'ts, the disasters and successes. I've been everywhere from being screamed at and hung up on to negotiating multi-million pound deals for major national brands. So let me start by saying, if you're new to it, of course it's going to feel hard. Firstly, because it's new. We know this. Everything feels hard when it's new. You need to be open to making mistakes and learning. You're thrust into conscious incompetence when you are painfully aware of all the things that you don't know. And that feels hard. But questions about what you're selling, how to handle potential objections or what those even might be. Like, where does that come from? Like, where do you start? So my first tip is this, stay present. If you're in your head thinking, oh God, what if they say no? What if they say yes? 
OMG, what if, what if, what if? You're not really going to be actively listening to the person on the other end, right? So how do you think that's going to turn out? Which leads me nicely onto my second tip. Preparation is key. If you prepare in advance as much as you can, then you're going to give yourself the best possible chance of success. So how can you prepare? So do what I do. Have, a, have an intake form before your call. I have one connected to my discovery call link. So to be able to book in a call with me, you have to fill in a short questionnaire. Now I ask what's the biggest thing holding them back right now. I ask a little bit about their business, where they found me, or what's the big life change that they want to achieve. I ask if they're in a position to invest in themselves. You know, Ask for their social media handle so you can get a bit of a picture of who you're talking to and where they might be at. And it will help you genuinely connect with them. It all helps me build a picture for if I think I can help them, if they're ready, how committed they are. In a few sentences, it really tells me a lot. I don't judge any of it. And then I get on the call with them with the name of just helping them through the process and helping them make the right decision for them, which all of that bit leads me nicely on to the next tip, which is be genuine. And I mean that, like really be genuine. I have never and will never get on a call with someone and look at them as a pound sign. That is not how you genuinely sell. My sole aim is to help them make the best decision for them. And if that's not working with me and it's working with someone else, cool. If I don't think I will help, I can help them. I will always be honest about it. At the end of the day, if you look at it as I need the money or anything along those lines, all it will bring you is grief. Yeah. You're operating from a space of lack. You're operating from a place of neediness pushing energy. You won't make the best decision for them or yourself. And that's how you end up with nightmare clients, the kind of clients who won't do the work or want the moon on a stick or the ones who treat you like they own you. It's not fun for either party. So if you can operate from a place of genuineness, then both of you will win whether they sign up to work with you or not. And they will remember the process as well. If it is a case that they don't sign up with you, they will remember the process and they will be grateful for your honesty. That's not so scary, right? When we have so much attachment to the outcome, then of course it's going to feel more scary because there's so much more riding on it. Yeah? It's a conversation, plain and simple. Yes, there are processes and structures to a sales call that can help, but in essence, that's what it is, a conversation. And you have those every day, right? Selling is actually a good thing. Because you're going to help solve someone's problem and that is magic. And as someone has a problem that you know you can help solve, why would you keep that from them? It's your responsibility to let them know that you can help and how you can help. But fundamentally, the decision lies with them. Yeah? Not you, them. It's their decision at the end of the day. Sales gets easier and easier and more natural the more you do it. Confidence comes from doing with anything in life. You know, you learn the most common obstacles for, for people from doing. You learn the most common objections and reasons why someone might say no or why they might say yes and how you can then help them through those particular objections, help them look at things differently. You're listening to this so you know that everyone's only ever operating from their unconscious, right? So <laughs> the more open you are to make mistakes, the more you'll learn and the better you'll get. The more you approach sales and selling from a place of serving and helping, the easier it becomes. The more your focus is on the person on the receiving end, the easier it will feel. So grab your journal and work through a few of these. Check your unconscious beliefs around sales, selling, and salespeople. What thoughts come up? What beliefs are there? Check your unconscious beliefs around what you're actually selling. What do you believe about what you're selling? Yeah? Check your unconscious beliefs around you and your product. What do you believe about you in the sales process? What do you believe about people buying your services? You know, what thoughts come up when you think about being on a sales call? How do you like to be sold to? Have you had any sales experiences that actually felt good to you? And really think outside the box here. It could be anything. Anything. It could be food. It could be beauty products. Anything. You know, what did you appreciate about the process? What do you not appreciate? And what really, really turns you off and is a definite no in your eyes, even if you really want the product? You know, when you know these things, you can find your style. And the likelihood is that your ideal client will appreciate and not appreciate what you do 
you'll be similar in some way normally. So if you can't stand it when people don't have their prices on their website, put your prices on your website. If you appreciate the process being really simple, then don't overcomplicate yours. It's so important to weed this out early on so you can get selling with confidence. And if you don't, it's going to affect every single little action that you do or don't take and you simply won't be successful. You know, if you're thinking, I don't have enough experience, I'm overcharging, no one will ever pay this, I don't think I can get them the results they want, they're going to say no. Then what actions are you going to take? What energy are you going to bring to that call? How are you going to feel before, during and after that call? Yes, there are many, many, many people out there, unfortunately, who do use the sleazy sales tactic, tactics, who do seek to manipulate and don't have the best interests of the client at heart. That is 100% true. I see it all the time and it drives me insane. But that does not have to be you. Okay? Just because it works for them doesn't mean that's how you have to do it. So really, really get your journal out and work through these questions and thoughts and really challenge yourself around what's really true for you. What could your style be? Find your style, my friend, and you will fly. So if you got value from this and you know in your gut that now is the time to step up and start rewiring your thinking and changing things for yourself, then book in a free discovery call so we can work out what needs to happen to get you from where you're at right now to the action taking success you know you can be. And if you want my eyes and ears on your problems, I work with people one on one and through my proactive pants mastermind. So stop waiting for if and when and decide to change things now because you can. And as always, I hope that was helpful. So any questions, just let me know. And as always, I will see you next week. Bye.